I'm sure many of you have heard of the James Webb Space Telescope and how its modern scientific instruments are pioneering research into galaxy morphology, star formation and exoplanet detection, which will undoubtedly lead to new discoveries of new and potentially life-supporting places within our universe. You'll probably also know that James Webb is in orbit around the Sun and not the Earth, as was the case with the Hubble Space Telescope, and is located in a precise point known as the L2 or second Lagrange point. This video aims to explain the physics behind Lagrange points, discuss what makes them so valuable to scientists and the solar system. So let's begin with a the theory, starting off where most things begin in astrophysics and orbital mechanics, by looking at gravity. As you know, gravity is an attractive force between any two bodies which have mass. Gravity is a relatively weak force, requiring objects to be absolutely massive in order for them to have significant gravitational pulls. This means that in the solar system, the main gravitational body is the Sun, as it contains over 99% of all the mass within the solar system. This causes all planets to orbit it, which can be described as what's known as a two-body problem. The two-body problem considers the motion of two attractive bodies. By this I don't mean the movement of supermodels or good-looking people, but instead, where the force between two objects wants to pull them closer. This isn't unique to gravity. Electromagnetism does this as well, like when the opposite poles of two bar magnets attract. In the solar system, there are lots of two-body problems, such as the Earth and the Sun, the Moon and the Earth, all of the planets with the Sun and all of the planets with their moons, the asteroid belt around the Sun, the list goes on. The key here is that each of these systems contain two bodies, which orbit their common centre of mass. So while it may seem true that the Earth orbits the Sun, to be more precise, the Sun and the Earth both orbit their common centre of mass, which is inside the volume of the Sun, due to it having almost a million times more mass than Earth. This is the two-body problem, and has been studied and solved analytically thousands of times, and can be used to predict the locations and velocities of objects in orbit to a high degree of accuracy in most cases. Now let's consider a two-body problem, which we know the solution for, but add a third body. Let's make this third object be really light, so light that its mass contributes negligibly to the system. This means the third body doesn't generate its own gravitational force to pull on and attract the other two bodies towards it, but it is capable of feeling the gravity from the other two acting on it. This case is known as the restricted three-body problem. Restricted as the third body is light and doesn't contribute an additional attractive force on the other two. If we wanted to go about calculating and deriving expressions which determine how the position of the third lighter body changes throughout time when placed at different parts of the system, we need to use Lagrangian mechanics. This is another way of solving equations of motion in classical physics, which uses a functional called the Lagrangian, defined as the kinetic energy minus the potential energy of the object. We can solve the Lagrangian for the third body within the rest frame or centre of mass frame of the two other bodies. By this I mean we place ourselves in the frame where the orbit of the first two is stationary. Essentially, our frame of reference rotates as the two big bodies orbit each other, so that the motion of the third particle already has this motion taken into account. Similar to how we feel stationary on Earth, even though it's rotating on its axis and orbiting the Sun, we are in the rest frame of the Earth's surface. I won't share the derivation here, as Lagrangian mechanics often involves lots of tedious maths and calculus of variations, but doing so gives the locations where if the third body were placed it would be in equilibrium with the other two. The intricate calculations aren't too important for this video, but if you're interested I encourage you to look them up, but these equilibrium points are what are known as Lagrangian or Lagrange points. For any restricted three-body problem there are always five Lagrange points labelled L1 through L5, and each have their own unique properties. Starting with L1, this is a point that lies on the line connecting the two massive bodies' centres of mass. This one is quite easy to understand why it's in equilibrium. The gravitational force from one pulling it one way is equal to the opposite force from the other body, giving you a point of zero net force. I'll use the Sun-Earth system to illustrate this. So L1 lies between the Earth and the Sun, but much closer to the Earth due to it being much less massive and so needing to be closer in order for the forces to balance. Next we have L2, which lies behind the smaller body, or on the opposite side of the Earth in this case. It is still on the extended line connecting the centres of mass. This is where the James Webb Space Telescope is currently orbiting. L3 then is behind the larger body on the centre of mass line, so opposite side of the Sun to Earth. Finally, L4 and L5 lead and trail the smaller body in its orbit. L4 and L5 always form equilateral triangles between the two larger bodies and lie on the orbital path of the smaller body around the larger one in the two-body system. In fact, all five Lagrange points orbit with the system. It's important to note that L1, L2 and L3 are always places of unstable equilibrium, meaning that if the third light body was placed on them, it would always move away towards one of the two massive bodies over time. Provided one of the two massive bodies is significantly lighter than the other, such as the Earth and the Sun system, L4 and L5 are stable equilibrium points. By this I mean light objects placed there should remain there on average and not shoot off over time. These have analogies to a hill and a valley. 
a ball on top of a symmetric hill is at an unstable equilibrium point. Any deviation will cause it to roll down and away from the summit, requiring additional energy for it to return. These are like L1, L2 and L3. To be precise, L1 and L2 are actually saddle points, but this analogy works fine for now. A ball at the bottom of a symmetric valley will always return to the bottom, even if a small force or deviation is applied to it. Provided it isn't a quantum ball which is capable of tunnelling out of the non-infinite hill, which luckily for us, planets and spacecraft are not. This means the ball is in a stable equilibrium point, as is the case at L4 and L5. These points are useful to scientists and engineers, as placing a satellite or space telescope at any one of these points will then only require a small amount of additional thrust or energy to be transferred over time to keep them at that point, even at the unstable Lagrange points. This makes having a sun-orbiting satellite which stays in the same place relative to the Earth's orbital motion an option, which is the case with James Webb orbiting at L2 behind the Earth. It can stay there for a long time, with only minor corrections to its orbit now and then. This means things that orbit at or near the Lagrange points have almost no risk of crashing into the Sun or the planet, making them remain at the same relative point for a long time. Other than human uses with putting up space telescopes, Lagrange points are used in nature by what are known as Jupiter's Trojan asteroids. These are asteroids which have ended up in the Sun, Jupiter, L4 and L5 Lagrange points, and due to them being stable have remained there. Earth isn't massive enough to likely have any large Trojans, but does have a collection of dust and smaller asteroids at its L4 and L5 Lagrange points. Jupiter's Trojans follow and lead Jupiter by 60 degrees in its orbit, due to the L4 and L5 Lagrange points forming equilateral triangles with the two massive bodies, i.e. the Sun and Jupiter, as mentioned before. The ability to put something in orbit around the Sun which will stay there for a long time without much perturbation or fuel consumption is incredible, and is only possible thanks to Lagrange points and the solutions to some tricky mathematical equations describing the restricted three-body problem. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It's free, it helps out my channel a bunch and you can always unsubscribe. Thanks for watching and I look forward to reading all of the comments from furious flat earthers who can't comprehend gravity if this video does well. See you next time.